Support for this episode is provided by listeners like you. If you'd like to be a part of the great people keeping this show going, please visit thelinecast.com slash donate. Welcome to The Lancast. I'm David Moulton. And I'm Becky Svensson. On today's episode of The Lancast, we talk with Kate Bear, local writer and author of the self-described mommy blog, Motley Mama. Kate gives us an inside look into the subculture of mommy blogging and how she's distinguishing herself from others. After researching and realizing I was one in a million, I realized the market is so saturated that you have to have a plan. You can't just sit down and just freestyle every day because people get bored of that. You kind of have to mix it up, change topics. Um, I keep a calendar and try to stay accountable to that. Not that it doesn't change with current events or things like that, but... Other topics we cover include what it's like to blog when your family is among the audience, or what Kate will be writing about once Waylon grows up. Um, I don't just think about Waylon, I think about all the Waylons and who have like all this information out there. Um, I, mean, I do think about his adolescence. I don't know where the direction of blogging is going, but if I'm still writing about that in a public way, how will I censor that? I'm not sure. Um, right now, I'm just writing about you know, his toddler antics, so I think that's okay, but I do think about him later in life and, and what I'll have to, you know, keep private. Enjoy the conversation. Well, Kate, thanks for coming on the Lancast. Yeah, good to be here. Could could you tell us just a little bit about your journey into sure. the world of mommy blogging? Sure. Yeah. Well, I started blogging when I graduated from college, and I was just doing it because I was at a desk job and I was so bored. And then I got pregnant while I was at a desk job. I mean, oh, no. <laughs> See, this is exactly why I'm so awkward. <laughs> anyway, no, whatever. I got pregnant, and I was pr- kind of like blogging about my pregnancy, and my readers really went up. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is a huge market. Like, I thought in my head, I'm in an age group where everyone's getting pregnant, and people want to hear about this. And so I started Motley Mama, and I got a pretty good um, readership right away. Um, and then, you know, months went by and like my readership kind of lulled and I was like, man, this is weird. So I started researching mommy blogs and I realized that my competition was like millions and millions. I mean, I'm telling you, there are just tons out there, like networks of mommy blogs, like conferences where mommy bloggers all like meet. It's like, it's weird. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should take a step back for for our listeners. Could you define the mommy blog for us and then tell us a little bit about uh, Motley Mama? Yeah, mommy bloggers, I just, I think that the mom blog phenomenon started out of moms being at home and having, wanting an outlet or something to do, something where they can share how they're feeling, their experiences, show pictures of their kids, kind of have like, an open discussion about what's really going on in parenting. Um, At least that's my experience with the mommy blogs that I read. That's what I like about blogging is that you can kind of, and it's like immediate satisfaction. You can kind of have a thought or want to open up a discussion and then it's right there. Everyone is there and we're all talking and that's what I like about it. What kind of things were you getting out of it when you first started? Like what kind of uh, responses or personal gain were you finding? Well, it would. I would think of something like, man, are like, what if we have a boy and like, am I going to circumcise my child? And like, I would have, and I would like research it, and I would hear all these arguments. But then when I would blog about it, I would. It, would, it was a different kind of discussion, like the gratification of, yeah, me too. I'm having this conversation too. This is why I chose to do this. This is why I chose not to. And it was really helpful to me um, as a writer. Um, Blogging's great because it's a, it becomes like a discipline. I have to do it every day. I'm getting immediate feedback. Um, I would say blogging for me really helps my writing as much as it does mothering. Um, that's why I continue to do it. Did you consider yourself a writer? I mean, I was an English major. I've been working on a book for about five years now. And so, yeah, I would would consider that my profession. Um, blogging really fits nicely into that because... Yeah. Very cool. That's You're not do. the first person on the show to tell us that blogging helps them feel like a better writer. Yeah, it 
my writing has gotten so much better since I started blogging. I mean, I trashed probably three quarters of uh, the book that I have and kind of replaced it with, you know, better writing <laughs> because I was <laughs> writing every day and realizing, oh, if I, this is why people say to practice art is because you can't just sit down and write. You have to do it every single day. And so now that I'm doing that, uh, my writing's gotten a lot better. Could you uh, describe kind of like the structure or the framework of the blog, how often you post, what kind of stuff you post? Okay. Yeah, I used to try to post every day. Um, when I first started Motley Mama a year and a half ago, I felt after researching and realizing I was one in a million, I realized the market is so saturated that you have to have a plan. You can't just sit down and just freestyle every day because people get bored of that. You kind of have to mix it up, change topics. Um, I keep a calendar and try to stay accountable to that. Not that it doesn't change with current events or things like that. But So what are some of those pieces? Like I have a t top 10 Tuesday um, list I try to keep up with. Um, people really like those kind of lists. Every Friday I do end of the week snacks where I um, find links, uh, funny YouTube videos, music that I'm listening to. And I link to people love that. I mean, I love that. I love finding stuff, you know, around from the, around the internet and summing it up every week. Um, I try to st I try to do you know a few parenting pieces every week since that's kind of what my blog revolves around. Although I wouldn't say that's exclusive to what I write about. Um, I try to listen to what my readers are wanting to hear about. I mean, the, I use that feedback and then mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. That's interesting what you said there about it not being exclusive to the parenthood thing because from. What I understand not having a kid is when you have one, it just consumes, like, everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> it does. But, it. I mean, yeah. I try to remember what it's like not to have a kid and then have friends who have kids. And it can be super annoying if you're always talking about your kid. <laughs> I also get kind of tired talking about Waylon. I mean, I love him, but I have more on my mind than just parenting. So yeah. I try to write about women's issues or, um, you know, just different yeah, whatever's whatever comes up. But how do you find your readers respond to that um, contrast? I I think they I mean I think they like it. I don't know. <laughs> I, honestly, like as someone who who reads your blog, I don't think you notice it. Okay. Like we, I don't know. Like the reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast was because I'm not a mom. Right. And I mean, I have plenty of friends who are moms, but I don't even really read blogs that much. But yeah. like your blog is just so fun. And it's Thanks. it's funny. Like, yeah. if you're listening, go go to mollymama.com <laughs> oh and read it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, and so there's something that you have brought to that really yeah. competitive um, landscape. That's that's something fresh and funny. And but I wouldn't even say, oh, there's this distinction these days. She does parenting these days. She doesn't. Yeah. It seems to flow yeah. really well together. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I try to do that, but mutual confession. Mm -hmm. I'm also not a mom. <laughs> So. <laughs> really? Now, now you know that neither of us are mothers. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> but he still has dreams. <laughs> <Someday>. <laughs> Would you say that you think of your audience and you're imagining a bunch of moms behind their Macs like during nap time, or is it broader than that? That's a good question. I I do think about moms behind their Macs, but um, I know like sometimes I think about my dad reading it, which is another thing but a whole other thing together thinking about family reading your blog but um i know there are non-moms who read it and i i want to include them too just because it's not all about parenting <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to brush over that let's talk about your family <laughs> oh, we don't and friends. have to oh gosh because because you are putting yourself out there and yeah. it's one thing to put yourself out and be like oh anybody you know right like, people i don't know will see this but then when you realize wait my support network is also going to read this yeah what if it's something, I think the number one, well, that is not true, not the number one, but one of the biggest things I've learned about blogging is that blogging and family often don't mix. It's mm -hmm. it's hard. My parents, I'm pretty open with them, but I think about my in-laws. I love them, but, you know, when you're writing about sex or you're writing about, like, sex with your husband, not that it's explicit, but when you're, like, joking around about something like that and then you're thinking my father-in-law's reading this, you just want to, like, shut that down. Mm -hmm. But... I can't. Anne Lamott has a really great quote. I don't know if you know her, but she says, write as if your parents are dead. And I try to think, <laughs> not like in a morbid way, but you kind of just have to like, I have to put that out of my mind. Or else, I mean, censorship like that can really kill writing. I mean, yeah. if I just cut out everything I didn't want my in-laws or my parents to read, I would have nothing really of substance, yeah. almost. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that extends beyond blogging and beyond 
um, just your parents. Like even as, if you're writing fiction, you draw from life. Right. I mean, if it's good, it's coming from something that you've experienced or maybe even people that you've experienced. And so if I think about writing a book, I think, oh, shoot, everyone will know that that was that guy that I dated in 10th grade. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, that's that's probably well, now. giving myself. It's like, now I know. <laughs> it's flattery to think that people would be analyzing my characters to that right. degree. But, but still, I think that's something people have struggled with ever since people were writing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are some of the most difficult situations that you've had to go through when, when writing the blog? Like either if it was something that you were covering, that what you were concerned about sharing about, or just the, the idea of continuing constantly? Beyond people that I know reading it, which is probably, used to, at least it used to be my number one concern. I would think about that a lot. Kind of drop that. Um, probably I know 10% of my readers, so I just try to focus on the other 90%. Um, yeah, there's been some content issues. Um, if you read my blog, maybe you remember Zoe, my sister-in-law wrote a guest post Mm -hmm. about, um, her stance on like women's rights and, um, kind of the egalitarianism in a marriage. You know, she just comes from the belief where the man is the head of the household. And so she wrote a piece on that and it was, it was hard. It was hard because it was my family and it was hard because the response was so strong. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had, I had, we eventually shut down the comments because it just became a little bit too, I don't know, ragging on her and making me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But, I mean, that's happened a few times with um, posts, but I try to keep it light, I mean, for the most part. I do, ha- I do try to, you know, talk about serious topics as they come up. I'm like working on a piece right now where I talk about some of the darkest fears in parenting, and, and those are the ones that take the longest because I really want to s- make sure I – I say the right thing or I say act how I actually feel or, you know what I'm saying? Like those are the ones that are hard to publish um, because they're like those real truths that are, you know, I know other people feel that way, but yeah, hmm. I try to keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> um, blogging seems to be this weird, relatively new form of media um, where kind of like the gloves come off in a certain right. way as a writer, like no one's holding you accountable to multiple revisions. Um, photography it could be whatever you feel like putting up in a moment and then a week later you're like oh my gosh what was I thinking right oh or, yeah um, and comments too like I'm just appalled at reading people's comments <laughs> yeah um, and and maybe you don't need to go necessarily into detail with that particular case but do you think um, parenting stripes strikes a really deep chord with your readers and that's why they would respond in that way or is that just the nature of how we communicate yeah in this part of it's way. like anytime you're behind a screen you know it's easy to say whatever you feel especially i allow anonymous comments so i mean you can really say how you feel i don't know who you are you could be my cousin but you could say whatever you want to hurt my feelings um but parenting is definitely one of those topics where there's just i mean things like discipline things like breastfeeding it's just really it gets really heated because yeah it's such a close personal thing and you want to feel like the best parent and so you want to defend your views you want to defend how you're parenting because i mean that's such a huge thing yeah so it has gotten heated but i like it i mean i like the discussion i think it's good to hear other people's perspectives i have people commenting saying the complete opposite of what i believe but i think if it's respectful it's good Well, it's time to head to break, but we'll be back with Kate in the second half, so we'll see you then. Great. Whoa, David, what have you got there? Uh, a pina colada? No, not the drink. Oh, this. Yeah, I've been meaning to tell you about this. We just got our shipment of 3x10 bumper stickers in. Oh, sweet. Now I can put one on my car and pick up chicks. Uh, Keith, you're married. Whoa, it's working already. Well, if you want a Chick Magnet Lancast bumper sticker like Keith, they're free. Just email us at bumpersticker at thelancast.com. Hey, Keith, get back here with the box of stickers. I need one for my car. Too late! And we're back on the Lancast with Kate Bear. Kate... You're not always crazy serious in the blog. Sometimes you have humor and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's quite humorous. I, I was reading your FAQ and I was uh, I was like, this is 
it's pretty funny. Like I like the way that I was getting the information from the questions, but at the same time, I kind of had a smile on my face. Yeah. So, is it easy for you to write humorously, or do you find yourself like writing something and then going back and adding the humor and the wit afterwards? Um, easy. I would just like to say that writing is not easy. <laughs> I mean, it takes me hours sometimes to write a paragraph, but as far as the humor goes. I mean, that's usually like I'm standing at the kitchen sink washing a dish and I think of something funny. So I quick scratch it down or, you know, like the typical you're in the shower and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so funny. I mean, I think I'm funny. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I would say the funny part doesn't happen when I'm just sitting down to write. Um, it's usually outside of, yeah, yeah, the desk area. I feel like some of the humor wasn't necessarily like what I would expect from a mommy blob. But, oh, uh, that's what a compliment. <laughs> I know. You know, sometimes I have a hard time. You know, I really want to put in a few swears every now and then because swearing can be so funny, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is funny. You know, you just want to throw a little whatever. I have to watch myself. Or else it's like, <laughs> is this TMI? Like, no one really wants to know about this, like, first mommy poop. But, I mean, you just have to talk about it. Just got to be real. Can you share with us a few of the things that you've written that you thought were the most funny? I think any time you write about, like, anal fissures or, like, postpartum pooping or, like, hemorrhoids, it's always funny. I mean, that is just hilarious. I mean, it's not funny at the time, but when you recall, like, straining on the toilet or, like, giving birth. I mean, birth isn't funny, but it is kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it's like any kind of trauma <laughs> later on. I mean, you can kind of make light of it. Yeah. Hmm. So you're famous for that that particular topic, but anything yeah, else? Yeah, people love to talk to me about postpartum pooping because it's one of those things – about pregnancy that no one talks about. Like, after you have the baby, like, it's it's pretty bad to, like, have your first poop. And so I wrote about it, and people were like, yes, that is hard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and people who don't have kids are like, I'm never having kids because, I mean, mm. I mean, it can be rough. Whatever. I mean, yeah. Wow, that's been my main holdback. <laughs> is that your main concern? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would take that into consideration. I mean, it's all worth it. I think that um, just in general, all the things about parenting, like toddlers, I mean, they're so terrible. But, you know, if you just make, you know, make light of it or just, you know, I'm haggard, you know, I'm in my bathrobe. It's four o'clock. Like, you know, I just have to make it funny because otherwise it can be really lonely. Hmm. And I think it's good to just, yeah, joke around. Well, let's talk about that for a second. What you, you are a stay at home mom now? I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Yeah. What was it like adjusting to that, that lifestyle? I think without the blog, it would be worse. Um, I do some freelance writing. I do photography um, on the side, some video work. Um, but yeah, staying home, not having coworkers, having my only conversation be with a babbling child. Yeah, it was it was hard at first, but you know, I I love it. Yeah, I love it. I think some people um, don't, and I, I think that's great. I have friends of mine who say, I will I will always work. I can't stay home. And I get that because there are days when I, I think that, but for the most part, I really like it. I think that's why people come to your blog because you, um, you're you funny, and but you don't neglect the, the real moments. You just approach them with levity, and that helps you get them through and helps you connect you. with them. So, Thanks. so. Um, would you be willing to read some of your blogs so we can get a feel for that mix sure. between funny and not funny? Sure. <laughs> I recently uh, wrote um, a manifesto, um, and so I'll just read a piece of that. My goal in life is to become Tina Fey and then slowly transition to Maggie Smith. I believe I can achieve this by doing three things, pursuing greatness, expecting surprise, and surrounding myself with the kind of people who snort laugh over absurdity but also know the value of impeccably delivered wit. I will never be the kind of person who prioritizes a clean kitchen sink or an organized day planner. I only work hard at the things I really care about, like my marriage, my son, writing, and friendship. I wish the list included things like exercise, housework, and Mod Podge, but it doesn't. And ever since Waylon was born, I've let that go. I'm never going to be my sister-in-law who plans her meals weeks ahead of time and doesn't sit down during the day because that would be lazy. I'm never going to have a handmade quilt on my bed or a well-kept garden in the backyard. Instead, I spend hours a day writing things no one will ever read. If that's a waste of time, then I like wasting time. My mantra is let what you love be what you do. Well, the first thing I want to say after hearing you read from the block is, is that the voice that you hear in your head 
when you write because <laughs> it was different. And not a, I'm not saying in a negative way, but yeah. like your reading voice. Well, you're reading out is, loud, but yeah. first of all, I have a cold, so I sound like kind of like a man. And second of all, I feel like when you read, I like get really serious, I, like drop my voice <laughs> down or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't but, really think about the voice. In my what's head. your inner? What's your inner like tone? <laughs> Maybe like a few octaves higher. <laughs> I don't know. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Kids are really cute when they're young, and there's so much about me that never wants them to grow old. But Waylon will grow up, and um, and two two questions for that. One, do you ever worry about what he would think about the blog? And two, what happens when Waylon grows up? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I don't worry about what Waylon will think because I just, I mean, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is strange to think about our generation. Um, with the point and shoot camera and the limited baby book, and now we put so much online, we take, you know, a million pictures. Um, I don't just think about Waylon; I think about all the Waylands and who have like all this information out there. Um, yeah, I think he will just. I think he'll be one of many. So, I mean, I do think about his adolescence. I don't know where the direction of blogging is going, but if I'm still writing about that in a public way, how will I censor that? I'm not sure. Um, right now, I'm just writing about, you know, his toddler antics, so I think that's okay. But I do think about him later in life and, and what I'll have to, you know, keep private. So you will continue writing as he's, you know, six-year-old, seven-year-old, preteen? I mean, like I said, it's really hard to know the direction that blogging is going. It's a phenomenon right now, but it could, I mean, I don't know what the next thing is. Um I know that I'll always be writing, and so I don't, I mean, whatever platform that takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this point, what's your main reason other than writing to continue to be mommy centric as you, as you move on? Is it just because that's what you do, or is it because like you found a, a niche that you really enjoy? Yeah, I didn't want to be a mommy blogger. In fact, sometimes I think about changing my name because I'm embarrassed. I'm like, I don't want people to think this is all I can write about or this is all that I think about. Kate's not a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Kate.com. Is it taken? Um, but it's really, I mean, I'm there is a, there is a place for it right now, and so that's where I, I try to stay. Um, I like writing about parenting, but, yeah, it could, it could definitely change. How far out do you put vision into, into the blog? You said you make a calendar and stuff, but, mm -hmm. like, do you come up with things and you just, like, place them really far out or do you only let I yourself do. go a week or, or um i try to go i try to have the next week plan but it changes i would say probably every week something changes i'll sometimes put like just a free write next wednesday or um every friday like i said is the same um mondays i usually just link back to a post i've already written i do four days a week right now i used to do five days and then i took a month off of the internet and realized that i was getting burnout partly because i was pushing myself too much five days is, is a lot yeah. and so i do four days new posts um one day i link back to a previous one well that's interesting that you went one month without the internet yeah. which which makes brings up the question that or the idea that i mean obviously you're more than just your your blog so right. tell us a little bit about kate outside of the motley mom world yeah um my husband's in med school uh so I'm kind of in that community of med school wives. So, yeah, we have a lot of fun. Um, so I have a good social network there in Hershey. And um, I also do photography. I do some video work. Um, I read a lot. I eat ramen noodles. I shouldn't, but I do. Um, do you I use watch the, TV. the entire flavor pack or do you like cut it in half? I use the entire flavor pack. I'm not going to lie. I really wanted to lie there, but I couldn't. And I used the whole thing. I love ramen. It's so weird. Carpe diem. It's so gross. Gross. <laughs> Carpe diem, yes. So before there was Baby Waylon, before you were even married, you were passionate about writing. Mm -hmm. As you think beyond having kids in your house, what, what else could the future hold for you in, in writing? Um... I'm working on a memoir right now, and it does not include anything about parenting. So I would say 
there's, I mean, what's to come? I mean, yeah, I don't know whatever, whatever happens. I, I don't, I don't know what the future of writing holds for me, but I'm open to whatever. Um, I tend to stay in nonfiction. I'm not a fiction writer. I don't plan on ever writing a novel. Um, sometimes I think about writing a pilot for a TV show. This just comes into my mind sometimes. I don't know where it's coming from, but that's really hard. Can you tell us anything about the TV show? (laughs) No. I'm just saying, like, I think about this all the time. Like, what if I was a screenwriter? Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty great. But that's (laughs) probably not on my horizon. Okay. I just realized we've skipped over something major here. Yeah. And we haven't talked about it. What does your husband think of all this information? Oh, yeah. He's a reader. People, (laughs) that's a really common question. He does read it um, every day. And he's very supportive. He wishes that I made more money. But uh, <laughs> he thinks my talents are going up free. Um, but he, yeah, he really likes it. I, if I write anything personal about him, I always check with him first. I send it to him, but he has never said, don't publish it. Um, yeah. Wow. He's pretty open. That's pretty cool. Yeah. He's a cool guy. My wife uh, my, my wife writes about pooping. That's. I wonder if that's how he's ever had to say that. <laughs> What's she write about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lucky him. <laughs> it's so much more than that. <laughs> okay, it's been really great to talk to you today. Uh, if our listeners want to hear more about you or find the blog, how can they do that? Uh, www.motleymama.com Great. Well, thanks once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been really fun. We hope you've been enjoying the Langcast. This episode was produced by myself, David Moulton, with show notes by Lauren Slesser. All pertinent links to this episode can be found in the show notes at thelancast.com. If you specifically liked this episode, we ask that you consider making a donation. Every little bit helps. Even a dollar a show can keep us going. If you would like to help support us in that way, you can visit thelancast.com slash donate. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and tell a friend about the show. So, for The Lancast, I'm David Moulton. And I'm Becky Svensson. Asking, are you in the cast? Enjoy the conversation. I always picture a big audio thing there.